underneath it filled with water, so they're actually swimming in it. And I put them in the start area here. And the way I do it first is to show them one color. to respond positively to the color, which just means to swim towards it. And every time they do, I give them like a reward, so I drop in a tiny piece of shrimp. So right. eventually they pick up and learn that if I go to this color, I'm gonna get rewarded. Right. Um, so once they can do this, then they can do it on either side, it doesn't matter. Um, either color can be on either side. Then I add a second color. So the object is to get them to consistently keep going to their rewarded color. I see. So what that's showing is that they can discriminate between these two colors and they can tell the difference between them and know to go to their rewarded color. They can see the difference. And then in the last step of it, um, I change the intensity of the colors because Can you see how this one's much brighter now? So if the turtles have been seeing this color is much brighter, they could just go to the brighter color every time. And they might not necessarily be doing it based on color. Does that make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the last step of it, I change the intensity of these. So I make one color brighter, like I would here, um, and then I make the other color dimmer and see if they can still go to their rewarded color. So that shows that they're making that discrimination um, only using the actual color. Right, not just the light. Right yes. Right so I'm training six turtles. Um, it's very, it takes a lot of patience training the turtles. But <laughs> Martin's probably the most patient turtle here. <laughs> Today I finished two turtles. Yeah. Completely, so I have one turtle left to train, which is very exciting. That is awesome. So, so what is the purpose of um, doing this? to see if they have color vision, which hasn't been Okay, it yet. hasn't been determined yet. And from there, we don't really know how they might be using color vision. Mm -hmm. So that would be the next step, whether it's finding their food or it's helping um, locate mates or produce whatever they sure. So it's just the first step. So that's awesome. Nobody's done it before. It's been suspected before, or it's suspected, but no one's um, shown it as clearly as this one. Awesome. Awesome. Good for you. It's really funny. I see them. I have one that goes down the maze in like two seconds with its mouth wide open just waiting for the shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> so they have very distinct personalities and... That's what some I put in the maze and they won't do anything, I can't train them, and others shoot down in two seconds and nearly like take off my finger as I drop the shrimp in. So. And some that are easier to train. Well, That's very good. Well, congratulations. <laughs> So, so cute. Oh, yeah. And they all think they're going to get fed because people just showed up by the side of the tank. Are they going to be here? Yeah. Two of them. And they're probably the ones that are... That are begging? 102? This one? Yeah, 104. And 104 is the other one. <laughs> yeah. So these are the turtles that are That's doing the experiment. Yeah. Oh, so cute. Yeah, they're quite a bit bigger. This is the one that... That one is. Down the is like quite a Tries to bite your hand. <laughs> that, that is... Quite a bit of growth. That is a lot of growth. That yeah. one's super sleepy. Yeah. Well, that's normal. That that would be a normal behavior. And so part of what we have to do before we let them go is we all we don't. You know, Morgan's situation is special where she's you know making sure they they can associate a reward with the the action. But normally we you know we don't hand feed them unless there's a special reason to, so right. that they can always look, look elsewhere for food, not to our hands. Right. So. And so the individuals that are just kind of floating, they haven't been put They've through the process? They're well, they, some of them some of them still are enthusiastic anyway. But but by the time, actually, we, we let, I think, I think when you were here last year, we showed you the satellite tanks here. For yes. Uh -huh. And um, those, you know, those ended up, those turtles, you know, one of them made it all the way to the, across the Atlantic to the Eagles. Right, and yeah, so, you emailed to me about that. Yeah. What size 
are they when you put the transmitters on? They're quite a bit they're larger. About, yeah, than they're this. about the size. They're about the size of my hand. Here. So probably double this size. Yeah, almost, almost double the size. When you do the color testing and stuff, do you ever like switch the colors, or do they go to one side every time? Nope. So it switches size. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, size, size and intensity. Okay, it's cool. just the color. So they know to go to the color no matter what side it's on. Right on. So how old do you estimate they are when you put transmitters on? Oh, two they're, months, they're three about, months? They're about two, and a minimum of two and a half months, and more, more likely three, three to five. I think our youngest ones that we've released with transmitters so far were three, last year we went from one go, two goes over three and a half, three months and a couple days. So they're still fairly small. Yeah. Yeah, we're, I mean, even though the transmitters are getting smaller, we still have to have an animal big enough so that we're not affecting its growth or its feed, ability to feed and all that. Right. Because that's that that was a big part of what we had to do was in the lab was verify that we're not affecting the growth, we're not affecting the behavior, right. not affecting the swimming ability to any you know. And so that's we spent a, almost two years doing that with loggerheads, and now we're going to do it with green turtles who are you know, up up there and. Uh, yeah, I was say, they're about three weeks old. So, so they're quite a bit larger than the well, loggerheads? No. <laughs> they're smaller? They, they start about the same size. You know, maybe a gram or two bigger, but not a lot. So, nor, you know, just for some perspective, when I started working with these animals, um, and as a graduate student, I would come from Illinois, down to Florida, study the uh, study the turtles, and I'd leave like two days before classes start, which is right about now. Right. And go back, and I would barely be able to stay long enough to get data on the green turtles. They would hatch just days before I had to leave. So these animals, just to, again, to get some perspective, same areas, same you know, same beaches that I was working on when I was a graduate student. They're they're hatching almost a month early. Wow. They're nesting earlier. And they're hatching earlier. Yeah. So I think things are, you know, it's, it's pretty good evidence that the, 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 the multiple, multiple sources that say that it's, it's, you know, getting warmer and changing. Well, the, the we look to the frogs in yeah. environments first, yeah. and so the turtles are probably on that same level of, you yeah. know, they're well, showing the change. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, the, you know, the common, the, the, the easy kind of concept to think about is the sheep. I did this 20 years ago. And I barely got my green turtle samples in, and right. now it's not a big deal because mm -hmm. they're hatching in July. So, wow! Oh, yeah. just ate something. Yes. Don't sneeze on the turtles.